All right, good afternoon and uh, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Dustin Hurt and I'm the chapter director of ACF Philadelphia. Uh, it's great to, to be here and to have a, a fantastic uh, pair of artists to talk about the practice and recent work. Um, we don't have a lot of announcements today, but I just wanna say uh, we do have some um, programs that are coming up in July um, best way to find out about those is to sign up for our email list, um, which is at acfphiladelphia.org. And uh, we will have some new um, opportunities for composers over the summer as well. So again, find out about those on our website. Uh, other than that, I think we're just gonna hop right into it. Um, we have two fantastic uh, artists today, Monette Sedler and Diane Monroe. And I'm really excited to uh, just sit back and and listen to the conversation and listen to the music. So take it away. All right. Thank you, Dustin. Thanks so much. <laughs> hey, hey Diane. <laughs> How you doing, Diane? I'm all right. How are you? Good. <laughs> Hanging in there. You look great. <laughs> Thank you. So do you. So do you. Oh, all right. All right. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, it was just like, you know, at first I was like, like, wow, she's such a great jazz player and everything and coming really straight from the jazz thing. It's like, how do we hook up, you know, in terms of our writing and everything. And then mm -hmm. I just I remember that, you know, like the first time I, uh, I, I heard you was like, like with Grover, you know, like that's the, the Grover groove, you know? Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> and was like, wow. I just like, wow. I just listened to you all the time. It was like really great, great music and stuff. And then, then I, I, you know, once, you know, once I kind of crossed over <laughs> into your world, I uh -huh. got, I, you know, I, I realized that you started, you know, you said you had a folk thing going on, you know, because remember, we had right. the, uh, had the protest project and, and, and you were involved and, and you said, oh, yeah, back in the day, you know, we were playing with, you know, Richie Havens and everything. <laughs> right, exactly that. In like, fact, uh, when we did, um, that program for we, we went to Virginia and we did the program for Nikki Giovanni That's and right. you had me playing handsome Johnny. That's right. And I was like, well, that's, that's where I was. You know? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Richie Havens all the way, you know, that's right. That's right. And man, I'm telling you, I was back in the day too, because, because I was a guitarist, singer, songwriter. And I did all the, the coffee house circuit here in Philly and in, in, in Germantown and everything. And okay. with uh, I played with, uh, as a matter of fact, your your man is uh, one of uh, your bass player, Steve Bestcrone, that you play with a lot. He, right. He, he he and I go back to you know when we were 15, 16 years old. I played. Uh, he he was he and Joel Levine were my, my jazz guys, and so we we had a trio named Anne, okay. Anne, and friends. And we played all this stuff. We played, oh man, we we played Carol King and Joni Mitchell and James Taylor and all this. <laughs> and right. Everything. And we were just all up in that. It was incredible. Oh. Gil Scott Heron, I remember, and 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 you yes, know, all all this stuff, you know. And that was that was really great. But then you know, like you were. Then I found out that you did an avant garde thing, too. Oh, totally that. that. Oh, go on. I mean, wow. Well, so why don't you just, why don't you talk about yourself? I'm not going <laughs> to. Yeah, because I, I, I went from the, the, the folk era and then I started playing with the group, uh, The Sounds of Liberation, um, and with Kanjamal and, and Dwight James. And, and so we've kind of revisited that with Brewtown Beats. And so we re released uh, some music from that, that era. Oh, and wow. then. Um, so, and then Byron Nankasuri was also a part of that group. And then from that, we kind of segued into Sonny Murray, you know, avant-garde, father of avant-garde drumming, uh, Sonny Murray. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, we recorded like piece, you know, uh, a CD called Apple Cores. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I worked a lot with him. And then through that, you know, we did the Change of the Century Orchestra with uh, Archie Shep and, Wow. Oh, Philly Joe Jones, Gracia Montour, and just like, I don't know, everybody, really. Yeah, that's amazing. That's just really yeah. 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 So I went from uh, like one end of the spectrum to the other. And then, uh -huh. um, and then from there, I, I filled in the gaps, you know, with the traditional jazz and 
and things like that. So. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, mine is, well, was a little different in that. In that, uh, I in in the middle there somewhere. I I got into classical music and and I stayed in classical music. Um, oh, okay. My family tradition and, and heritage is, is is really it's a guitar heritage really and, and banjo actually I found out. Um, uh -huh. And my grandfather was a virtuoso guitarist and and uh and my uh one of my cousins my my grandmother my grandmother's uh uh nephew uh was in the Dix dixie hummingbirds he was a guitarist for the dixie hummingbirds How howard carroll and okay. he used to come over our house and play all the time and when i was a kid when i was a little girl and everything and so i just ate up that music the gospel and and and, and blues and all of that stuff that he used to play it was amazing it was amazing oh. Wow. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It was really, really something. And, uh, you know, I had a little, little bit of the African drumming th thing going on. Um, you know, we, hmm. always, we always had, had percussion instruments in our house and, and my, my mother and my, my uncle grew up in Harlem. So, uh, and they lived right across the street from the Savoy. Okay. So, and so they they danced to the music of Duke Ellington and, and and Count Basie and everything and they you know they they saw uh, my uncle he said he said he saw Monk for the first time and uh -huh. and, and uh, when he went to the Apollo at age nineteen and stuff. Oh, wow! Wow! <laughs> I was like, whoa, you know. So growing up with with all of that and then and then then you know then I started taking. Uh, piano lessons after my uncle was teaching me boogie woogie and and blue monk on the piano okay my, my my parents decided that okay you should you should probably just do the straight and narrow first you know do the academic training and yeah so, and so i picked up the violin and then it's just like and that's you know i went through that until age 12 and then then uh suddenly somebody gave me a guitar and i started playing and my grandmother started crying and she said how come mm -hmm. you i said how you come you crying mama and she's she said you sound just like papa and oh. like yeah 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 so it was that 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 was the start of that and so that started me into writing you know it's uh -huh. like i wrote uh, you know, I wrote a lot of lyrics, of course, you know, in, in, in that time period. I wrote protest songs, I wrote, but mostly love songs, you know, of course. And, and yeah, yeah. When you're a teenager and, you know, it's just like all, all of that, all of that. Yes, yeah, yeah. Smokey Robinson was, you know, and, <laughs> you, if you listen to r and that was like, it was it. <laughs> that was really, wow. <laughs> so, it's um, all about the love songs, for it's sure. All about the That's exactly right, exactly. Right, right. Wow. <laughs> Seriously. Wow. So it's funny because you, you had an uncle, um, you know, your uncle was influential and I also had an uncle that was influential, influential to me. It's uh, my uncle Nathan because uh, he played the piano. He played by ear, but he would come over often, you know, and, and play on my mom's baby grand. And I'd just sit there on the floor listening to him just in amazement. Oh, man. Um, so I, I really, wow. <laughs> really enjoyed it. He played all, all the standard tunes and, and it just was so yeah. awesome. So. Wow, did he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm, that's so wonderful, wow. Well, um, speaking of the the blues and and stuff. <laughs> okay. And um, I I had heard a tune of yours that I really liked and it was, it was really down home and it sounded like something that we could maybe start off with. Okay, sounds good. Well, um, you know, in in my in my writing practice, I've I've done a lot of work with uh, with different poets, and uh, one of my main uh, collaborators and and best friends is uh, Peter B. Mason. So one of the uh, the pieces uh, of her poems was called is called Blues for Junior, which is dedicated to her to her brother, um, and so. I um, put together an eight bar an eight bar blues actually to go uh, with her poem Blues for Junior. Ah, so, so let me um, pull that up. Okay. I just I just learned some new stuff today. So um, <laughs> hey, I, and I actually remembered how to do it. Hot dog. Here we go. <laughs> I can remember. 
This is a blues for Junior and all the brothers in between. This is a blues for Junior and all the brothers in between. Feels like the same old tired script from an urban movie scene. Blues for Junior. But I'm gonna write a new one where you take the leading role. Said I'm gonna write you a new one where you take on the leading role. So life can shine on you, brother. Feed your spirit and soothe your soul. Blues for Junior. Tell me, sweet Junior, you wanna be a hero or a king? Sweet, sweet Junior, are you a hero or a king? I've got your high crown waiting, steel cape with golden wings. Blues for Junior. Said this is a blues for Junior and all the brothers in between. This is your blues, Junior, and all those brothers in between. Feels like the same old tired script from an urban movie scene. Blues for Junior. In my show, you're protected. Got wings hitched to your back. In this show, you're protected. Got angel wings on your back. Said I'm gonna block all harm from you. Shots, light, and random attacks. Blues for Junior. And when that award season come around, you will be there with your heavy grin. Said when that award season come round, you will be there with your heavy grin. Arms extended and knowing this time you're gonna win. Blues for Junior. Gonna take on this world, dear brother, wearing your heart on your sleeves. You're gonna take on this world, dear brother, wearing your heart on your sleeves. Some folks intend on pressing you, won't just leave you be. Blues for Junior. into a corner and you can't go left nor right said when your back is in that corner and you can't go left or right remember this little song brother remember your purpose is to take flight blues for junior this is a blues for junior and all the brothers in between this is a blues for junior and all the brothers in between Feels like the same old tired script from an urban movie scene. Blues for Junior. This is a blues for you, Junior, but with splashes of color and fame. This is your blues, Junior, but got splashes of color and fame. Some folks born to dwell on the bottom, but brothers like you aim to rise like cream. Blues for Junior. This is a blues for Junior, but with splashes of color and fame. This is a blues for Junior, but got splashes of color and fame. Some folks dwell on the bottom, but both like you ain't to rise like cream. Oh, man, that was the blues, girl. Who's the junior? <laughs> Who's the junior now? <laughs> right, right. This is really beautiful, really beautiful. I love your voice too. Yeah, it's really. Oh, thank you, thank you. Certain, yeah, and the poem yeah. as that was great. That was really great. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's just like soothe the soul, soothe the soul. <laughs> All right. Well, 
um, I can follow a blues with a blues. Okay. Like. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Okay. It's a different kind of, it's totally different kind of blues, actually. It's uh, speaking of our, our backgrounds and stuff. Um, at the time of uh, that I wrote this, um, I guess maybe a year before that, I, I had played uh, the, um, the piece by Bela Bartok, mm -hmm. uh, a trio. It was, it was called, it's called uh, Bartok Contrasts mm. for violin, clarinet, and piano. And, okay. And as a matter of fact, the, the premiere the premiere of that of that tune was uh, was done, I think, in Carnegie actually by um, Joe Segetti, Joseph Segetti, the violinist, and uh -huh. uh, and Benny Goodman played clarinet. And, wow. Yeah, and Bartok actually played piano. But but just to um, so I was I was thrilled with the piece. I mean, it, you know, it reminded me of of a lot of things that you know, it it had. I mean, in in, in my uh, in my bones, it, it was it was African a, a lot of it. And, okay. And yeah, and uh, and I and I love Bartok anyway. I mean, I just just love all the quartets and all the you know everything that he wrote, the concerti and everything. And so I got into you know the the the, the clustery thing and everything. I, I mean, I didn't explore it that much, but I just wanted to. I was in a quartet. I was in the Uptown Quartet at the time, mm -hmm. and and Max wanted to record it. And Max Roach wanted to record. Max Roach was the, just just so if anybody doesn't know, it was in the Max Roach Double Quartet, which the Uptown Quartet was a part of. That it was a string quartet with Max Roach's daughter, and uh, and we played uh, all over the place as as like a string big band to to Max's um, uh, quartet, jazz quartet. Which was mm. which had the famous, the beautiful, and amazing Odine Pope from Philly. Hey, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the man. Pope, that's yeah. his, his, my main man. <laughs> and, and and my other main man is Tyrone Brown, the, the oh, bass yeah. player. Is right. another Philly Philly guy. Is a beautiful. I've, I've and I've never heard anybody play so fast in, in all my life. Mm. And <laughs> and uh, trumpet, of course, it's with an incredible Cecil Bridgewater. Bridgewater, right. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But so so this is about the time, this is in 1992, when we kind of bro broke from the band and and, and we were able to, to do some of our own things. And Max uh, didn't like it that I called the tune Contrasts 2. So he said, OK, so what else you want to name it? And I uh -huh. said, I said, oh, off the wall. And he said, okay, you're in. Okay. <laughs> That'll work, right? <laughs> so, so this is off the wall here. Okay, uh, you, you got to, uh, can you stop, stop sharing? Stop sharing. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh huh. And um, I'm going to just do the sound thing here and try to get this uh, up. Let's see now. And uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about it. Um, it's uh, it's a theme in variations, basically. You know, okay. the first theme is uh, just a, just a melody, and the melody has intervals of uh, my favorite part in the, in, in contrast. So this was the last movement, this the 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 the, the second section, the, the slow section. This is like di do di da do da do di 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 and then it climaxes and then the climax i love it da 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 di da 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 so so yeah. th th those intervals are are th th what i used for the blues too mm. so okay so that's the first theme and then the second theme uh is a written solo for the viola and uh -huh. the cello the cello improvises and the cellist of course, is Eileen Folsom, which was a, was a great, amazing improviser, actually. Okay. Chelsea Blair. And she is uh, aunt to, was it Marshall? Uh, was it uh, the, 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 the young drummer here in Philly? Oh, uh, Anwar? Yeah, Anwar. Anwar yeah, Marshall. Anwar. And she, right. she was on to him, and it made perfect sense. That It makes perfect uh -huh. sense because they are equally as talented. It's, it was really incredible. Anyway, she, she plays a mean bass line. And also, the third vari the second variation is, is, is a two violin, like kind of a, uh, a talk and drum kind of deal, a back mm -hmm. and forth uh, you know, call and response. And then the third okay. variation... It's a very short, but the third variation is is an improvised solo that I do, and then the fourth variation is a shout chorus, 
and then okay. all right and then i end the tune with the with with, with a like a, a count basie statement little little thing there oh, beautiful. <laughs> okay so awesome. here, here is um uh, off the wall mm -hmm. Awesome. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Ended it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, that's great. Okay. All right. It brings back some memories there. Uh, okay. All right. So, what you got for me? <laughs> well, um, I have uh, this is a piece called Three and One, since um, since you played that one, which was um, 
you know, kind of several movements to it. Mm -hmm. So three and one is it, it start the first one. The first part is a um, um, kind of slow rubato melody, and then it goes into like a six eight. Because I, I really like to um, work with uh, three against two a lot. Ah. So um, pretty much um, quite a few of my songs will have those elements in it. Um, so you'll hear the same motive over the 6-8 uh, ostinato as, as well. And then um, then it goes into like a basso, samba, quasi thing. But um, so I think I'll just play it rather than try to talk about it so much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
I'll cut it off there. <laughs> oh, that was great. That's really great. I like that piece. I really do. I never, I never heard that one. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's bad. That's bad. That's. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. So, how did you uh, uh, make some decisions uh, that you made in the piece, <clears throat> like you, you know, your transitions and stuff? How, how did that? How, how did you come to those conclusions? And, and I guess basically, what were you thinking about? You know. When, when you when you strung all those uh, elements together? Yeah, well, I think, you know, for me, when I'm writing any piece, it's kind of like a puzzle and connecting dots. So um, if I start out with the motive and then, and then maybe I, I came with the astronaut mind and then I'm, I'm thinking, oh, wait a minute, that'll fit over that. You know what I mean? I <laughs> could, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, and so it kind of works for me kind of organically like that. Um, it's like I'll write a piece and then I'll analyze it afterwards. Or if I know I have to get from point A to point B, then I'll I'll try to figure out a transition to to uh, make that happen smoothly. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's pretty much how I, I go about constructing uh, my compositions. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm moving back and forth between movements and time signatures and things like that. And time signatures and stuff, yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. oh, yes, great. Yeah, sure. Um, the, your, you had the ba I love I loved the bass sound in the beginning. You had uh, someone bowling, yes? And yeah, oh yeah, the players on the, on the uh, that's from um, the CD I did for Steeple Chase called uh, Time for a Change. And uh, the musicians, uh, that was Gerald Benson. Or not, oh. not, yeah, uh, yeah, on um, on upright bass. Uh, uh, William Duke Wilson played congas on that and percussion, uh -huh. um, and also um, Newman T. Baker was on drums, trap drums. Mm -hmm. um, wonderful Oliver Collins played piano, uh -huh. um, and and myself. Wow! Yeah, That's a great group. It's a beautiful group. Yeah. Yeah, so you're burning. Yeah, yeah, it was a really nice, yeah. nice set. Yeah. This was like uh, 1970 something fingers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, where is it? Oh, shit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> not shabby, not shabby. <laughs> wow. No, yeah. just, oh, you were thrown down. Yeah, yeah but, but, uh, but yeah, it's a good group, and and actually, I think they're uh, thinking about releasing. They they have a recording that they hadn't released, uh, Stephen Chase. So they they um, sent me a mix and said they're possibly releasing that in the fall. So that'd wow, be nice. That's, that's incredible. That's great. I can't wait yeah. to hear it. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's really super. That's really super. <laughs> mm -hmm. So right. we've, um, you know, also both of us have done uh, work as far as uh, active activism and and like uh, our music and and making like a social statements and things like that. Um, yes, we have. Yes, we a have. lot, right? So I think, yeah, I think we, yeah we share that in common too. This uh, yeah, the list goes on now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's really nice. It's really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, we you know we in sharing the cultural background, you can't help but you know um, you know, it's just being being black and female, and you know in 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 this country and and, and in Philadelphia, you know um, we just everything lines up in terms of our trials and triumphs. Yes, absolutely. Well, yeah, that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, go ahead. So you've, um, you know, you, you've been blessed, and you've been working as as a, a in the class in the classical uh, music world, as well now as in the jazz music world. And 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 for you, how how is that um, for you? I mean, what are the, some of the differences? Some of the challenges? Some of the, uh, you know. Yeah, that type of thing. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. How's well, that working for you? <laughs> how's that working for me? <laughs> well, honestly, sometimes I don't even know how that's working for me. You yeah. know, it's like it just, I just, it, it has just flowed for me. You know, from one 
uh, you know, cultural expression to another. You know, I don't like to use the word style for some reason, but it, but you know, I I just I I really um, it feels it it often feels like I don't there's there's there are no lines you know between the musics you know right. to me because I think one thing that that happened with me was that I was you know yes I am blessed in in many in multi areas um, I was blessed to have have some really great teachers outside of my even even outside of my um, primary violin teachers mm -hmm. who talked about the music and you know and Max is one of them you know mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, you know Max talked about the music just like just like Karen Tuttle talked about the music who was you know a a, a, a very influential um, uh, pedagogue for me in school she was my my chamber music coach for years okay um, and she taught me how to relax with the violin and, and and everything and i mean they spoke the same language you know it's like you know felix gallimere and then you know and R reggie workman and all you know i mean the, the, the there were so many parallels to 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 both i'll say both sides kind of thing you know and it's like and so for me I just had to connect the dots really deeply uh, internally, uh, you know, as uh, personally, really deeply, because I was I was ill confident about my African roots and my heritage. I mean, I knew I had it, and it was great, and I was feeling good, you know. It was like that was I I just did like this all the time when I was younger, you know. And the more I was steeped in the classical world, e even though I just I I was able to to, to function, and it, even though I uh, I loved the music and I just embraced the music, the training was really was really totally the opposite. You know, in fact, I had uh, a, I actually had a um, a class when I when I started the violin in third grade. I was in um, I was at H Harrington Elementary School here in West Philly, and, uh -huh. and uh, uh, I was in a classroom with with um, well I was the only black girl in the class, and there was about maybe six of us or so, and um, I was laughed at for using my ear, you know, mm. like I dropped my music and I, and I kept playing the tune, right? Everybody started crack, you know, really laughing at me and humiliating me. And wow. it was, yeah, it was really deep, you know? And so, I mean, you know, you're talking a while back too, also. Yeah. And things were really different. So, so like, um, you know, so those kinds of things were really, uh, you know, like, I think, you know, it, it, it influenced the, the way I, I, you know, expressed and wrote and everything, but I didn't really, um, I, it, it also held me back, mm -hmm. you know, it held me back until now, <laughs> you right. know, and I had, the, the, there was a project that I did this, the, you know, when I, um, I won the grant, the Pew, uh, for Pew Arts and Heritage, this grant yeah. to, to do a project called Violin Woman African Dreams. It's like all of those, those, um, ideas and understandings of my personal life came came back to me it was it was roughly about about that experience those experiences you know mm. and um and and really uh to, that there was this one um that, well the piece was narrated it was a suite for uh for string quartet myself also uh, so it's three violins, viola, cello, okay. uh, uh, rhythm section, plus plus you know African drums and uh, um, uh, African chora and, and and African banjo. And nice. So, so yeah, and so uh, you know I guess back back then when I was in elementary school that would have would have been unheard of 
or I mean, it would be something that would be balked at, you know, um, right. You know, just to, to, to pair those instruments anyway. So that, uh, that's the suite was, was, <clears throat> had had many many levels but but uh the the one narration uh that preceded this piece i'm going to uh, play for you was um uh given by charlotte blake austin uh she yeah. she narrated the whole entire uh i mean she wrote the script i mean it was incredible i sat down with her for three hours uh-huh and and talked into her, her tape recorder and she asked me all these questions you know and she just now she crafted this script that was to die for seriously i mean she's wow. you know how great she is you know and so um anyway so uh she i i think you might hear her if we have time later a little later on but but um so so then that narrated piece is about that was the first piece uh, and, it, and, and it was about the elementary school thing, okay? And um, so I'll play you uh, the music that came after it. And, okay. uh, and it was it w originally, uh, it was a sad, uh, I had written for a play and it was, it was a character piece that I, I messed with. I just really m messed with it. Um, uh, and so this is this is the it, it pretty much in its first version, um, and so the string quartet is playing that. The, the public quartet was playing with me. Actually. Okay. It was public quartet. Uh, Curtis Stewart, the first violin. Uh, Janina uh, Northpoth, the second violinist. Uh, 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 Nick Revel, the violist, and uh, Hamilton Berry was the uh, cellist in, the, in that group. So here's okay. here's the just just a uh, a little it was kind of like a an interlude okay? okay uh and and then what follows is is a calypso version so i'll just play you the interlude first it's just a classical thing here uh, uh, nope <laughs> we'll get to that momentarily Get to the number here. Oh, almost. Okay. Well, I can't. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, we might hear a little bit of Charlotte at the okay. end. In the years to come. <laughs> Okay, so that's the opening, and this was, and this is the Beautiful. Calypso version. I'll play a little bit of that for you next. Let's see. Uh, yeah, okay, set. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little slow here. Okay.
okay all right so that that was that was that and then um actually actually I just, just, just keep going uh, oh that's what I need to put uh, prior to this I put in the piece um, an, an actual calypso tune just a hummable type tune okay, okay. Um, because of the fact that, well, two reasons, one, one of the reasons was that I love Calypso music and I, I, I grew up also mm -hmm. listening to, to Harry Belafonte. I mean, I went to, I just slept and, and woke with Harry Belafonte. Really? Yeah, he was amazing. He, he was right. amazing, wasn't he? He was just yes. incredible. And so, uh, th that was one reason and, <laughs> and, um, and, and another reason is because Calypso music actually is, uh, in, in essence and in its original form in the Car Caribbean, uh, protest music. It's, it's a protest song. That's mm. really what it is all about. And I was really about protest with this piece. And so I <laughs> protested that I was humiliated that I had, that I was using my ear and I, and, you know, so, so, you know, I was, I was thinking about all of these, all, all of these things, you know, while I was writing, it was like, okay, maybe it'll fit in the front of this piece. You know? Right. And oh, beautiful. Uh, so like here, well, you, you know, that, that is the, the African tradition is an oral tradition. You yeah. Know? So, um, that, that makes sense. And the fact that, um, you know, they didn't understand that they, they were laughing because they they really just didn't understand that concept. Yeah, they didn't get, they didn't get it. Yeah, right. Get exactly. It. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, even African Americans, you know, back then didn't didn't get it, and you know, just really. Um, yeah. Because we've been trained out of it, and we've been, uh, you know, brainwashed out of it. Right. Here, here is uh, the the uh, the melody. Play, played by the, the first violinist in the quartet uh, again. <laughs> Okay, there. Okay, and then I'm going to skip to to another section. And I'll just have it play for a little bit here. And uh, what you're going to hear is um, you're going to hear the uh, Cora do a little little bit of soloing. And the Cora is, of course, the the, the, um, the African harp. It's a precursor to the the, the American harp. And uh, it's, it's such a beautiful instrument. It's a 21 string f f fiddle, as I call it. But <laughs> yes, love them. I've I've. I've had uh, a Cora player at my guitar summit like twice. Oh wow! Oh, I missed that one. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> with those, <laughs> my favorite instrument, really. Yeah, really. Wow. Well, you you often you also play uh, some African instruments. You played the ngoni. Singoni, yes. Singoni. Uh -huh. Singoni, yes. Uh -huh. It's beautiful instrument. Yeah. yeah, I love it when you play that. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Okay, so here's a uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was really. I love, I love the, the connection and, and, uh, you know, merging the, the two different genres and, uh, and I just, I'm in love with the chorus, so, you know. Can oh, I the chorus, just incredible, really. <laughs> it's nothing like it, right? <laughs> yeah, nothing. It's wonderful, yay. All right, so what do you think? Do you have a, uh, time for a couple more? Yeah, I wanted to play um, um, my contribution to, to classical music. Uh, you know, we, we did um, the hip opera, hip opera. Yeah. And um, so we were trying to blend um, hip hop and classical music. And so I wrote this piece to um, to a poem called Back Home. And, uh, and so I'm gonna play that title, that composition for you. Back Home, uh-huh. Yes. Well, I remember it actually. Yeah, because we were both on that together yes yes and and uh uh this the the, the singer was extraordinary the, what was her yeah name? julianne whitney green julianne whitney whitley green Whit yeah she she was totally amazing she was she was she killed it she killed yeah. it oh my god so, <laughs> and and there's a violin playing but i don't think it's you i think it was part of the um the quartet that they had that day and yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was uh, mm -hmm. I, unfortunately I don't remember her name. Was it was it um was it Leah Leah Kim? It could have been. Uh huh. Yeah, because she played my piece too. She played words. Okay, piece. right. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here it is. Oh, I'm going to start again. I had turned my volume down. No. 
heartbreaking. This is just so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's, um, she was, um, she really sang that song and interpreted, you know, perfectly. Just perfectly, right. right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, and, and the poet was, was an eighth grader, right? I know, you know what I mean? <laughs> So it's unbelievable. <laughs> so I'm I'm looking at her words and I, I'm saying, okay, how can I uh, connect to what you know what she was trying to convey mm -hmm. in, in her poetry, you know, mm -hmm. and and so you know, like with with all all the music that I write, um, especially if I'm writing something that's lyrical or or collaborating with the lyricist or poet you know i had to put myself in their space somehow like connect an experience i guess actors maybe do that you know when they're reading a part and they yeah. have to find something within themselves that uh that connects them to what the uh the script is about you know exactly exactly make it believable you know? oh Oh man, no, so so very well put. I think, yeah, I think that we we are that, you know, right. we, we we have to to do that in, in order to connect. I think it's, uh, you know, I mean that's that's what really uh, <laughs> tugs at the heartstrings. It it really makes the difference. It makes the difference. There are so many uh, times when I you know go to concerts and I feel cold afterwards. You know, I just don't get anything. From right. I just don't, yeah. I don't feel like maybe the, those artists have made that those journeys, that journey, mm -hmm. of discovery and you know, and depth of of understanding. You know, it's like you know, every every piece doesn't have to break your heart, but but no, but there's, there's a myriad of emotions that we have, and 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 that's what music is, the vibrations. That's what they're supposed to do. Oh my God! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> stir up. the pot. <laughs> stir that pot. Stir that pot. Yeah. Well, I could do just one more, too, and and we could just then go to uh, questions. Um, yep. I I, I I definitely would like to play "Stay Strong." Uh, okay. Why don't you do that then? Why don't you do that? Let me do that first. Yeah. Why don't you do that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So "Stay Strong" is um is is the title track from the, the new CD, <laughs> and um. And this was a way for me to kind of, um, uh, you know, express myself about uh, Black Lives Matter and what's happening today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let me just wow. try to pull that up. Um, oh, I know what it is. That. I like that. Is that the one? What were you gonna say? Sorry, no, no, no. I was gonna ask you. Was that the one that you you slipped to me a, a few months ago? Uh, right, because uh, um, or something. Yeah, and and you were commenting on um, how I was able to create some dynamics, but very simplistically. You know, it was like less is more. Ah, I see. Okay. <laughs> So 
definitely have a, 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 a rich history between us, I think. And um, so yeah. what do you come, what are you doing next? Huh? What? Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I, thought, I thought we were going to do some questions here. But uh, what, what are we doing now? I, don't know. I think we did like about five minutes. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I can play something else though. <laughs> I'd rather yeah. do that than That's tell you nice. what I'm gonna than tell you what I'm gonna do next because I don't know what I'm gonna do next. Okay, <laughs> then play us something else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I wonder whether I should play. Uh, okay, I'll do this then. Um, no, it's just like too string heavy. So I'll do, I'll do the um, what we um, we're talking about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Papers are in order here. Yeah, okay. Uh, in, in, in protest, again, we have, uh, we have um, a tribute really to Nina Simone and her, ah, right. her, 
and her hardships. And uh, I won't go into all of it. I'll just start to play it. Um, we start off with a banjo ostinato, and then uh, then we have a, 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 a core melody, and then then this, these strings enter. It's it's sort of like a a kind of a a, a history of her life, you know, kind of through my eyes, you know, okay. it starts in Africa and, you know, it ends up somewhere in, in, in America and, you know, and, 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 and then at the same time back to Africa kind of thing. Uh -huh. so, but so in the middle, uh, we have, we, we have joined, uh, you know, strings in ways that, that they don't, wouldn't normally play. Um, they have these, clusters and fourths and stuff okay. like that. let me let me do that for you um oh i have to share because you're and because yes. you allowed me to do that <laughs> i did i, I stopped my share. Actually, you stopped your share i did my part girl. That's incredible. <laughs> all right just a sec here all right <laughs> yeah, here we go Okay, here we are. Okay. Okay, now we mess up a little because the audience was clapping we threw off. Oh, no. <laughs> I think we I think we get back on here. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>
That's sweet. Beautiful. Yeah. So she goes through her changes. She was going through her changes and uh -huh. she reached the, the, the height of, of her frustration and pain. And uh, of course, around that time, she <clears throat> uh, she was she was a Juilliard student and she wanted to try out for Curtis and, and she didn't get in. But I, I right. uh, anyway, it I'll that that's to be continued. So we, we need to we need to talk to the folks here. <laughs> All right. Beautiful well, tribute to Nina Simone. Wonderful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your, your, your stuff is awesome. Just off the charts here. Thank you. All right. I'll stop to share there and we'll go to Dustin. Hello, Dustin. How are you? <laughs> hey there. I dropped a question in the the um, chat panel, but I'll just, uh, you oh, know. You did? Yeah, oh. I'll just ask you in person. Um, oh, wow. You know, we chatted a little bit about this on the phone this morning, Diane, but maybe you could talk a little bit, each of you, about how you see, you know, kind of your role as performer and composer, the way in which, you know, they certainly affect each other, but how you, I think, maybe also carry that, you know, think about those titles as, a, as they're associated with you as, a, as an artist, mm -hmm. um, because it, it seems... It seems like you both do a lot, um, but so maybe, you know, yeah, talk a little bit about how you approach the idea of composer and performer in your individual practices. Hmm. You want uh, to, oh, go ahead. Sorry, okay. So for, uh, for me, uh, composing is like, you know, ever since I, I started, you know, playing music, um, I could be practicing and, and, and just a couple of notes will like spark something for me and, and okay, so I'm now, I'm practicing, but now that's over because now it's time to compose because I've, I've struck two notes that have hit something in my soul that says, okay, this should be a song or this should be, you know, a composition. <laughs> and, and so from the beginning, that's, that's pretty much how I, I function. Um, and so writing um, started at the very beginning for me and has continued on um, to now. So I can, you know, that's just what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, if I'm collaborating with someone, then of course I'm writing. Uh, um, to collaborate and, and whatever their their thematic uh, ideas are to like co coordinate with that as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it really just depends on what I'm doing, but just personally as a composer, I'm, I just have to pick up an instrument and hit a couple of notes and I'm in song mode, you know, <laughs> <laughs> right. composer mode. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah, well, I think it's as jazz musicians, you know, most jazz musicians write because that, that of course i mean what you know we're creating all the time when you when you spontaneously create you know you're 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 speeding up the process <laughs> and you're, you're doing it now and you're speeding it up so you know when you write it down it it's it's slowing down the that that little that little that motion there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. putting it on paper um i you know a, a lot of academics uh differ you know, in those, in that understanding and, uh, you know, and um, treat the two separately or something, you know, but I don't, I just see, I see a long, a, 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 just a long thread going by. And so for me too, it's the same thing. It's just writing is part of what I do. And, you know, it's part of the ear and, you know, it's just, you pick up things and you, you know, and, and you, and you respond. It's a, it's a, it's a response. It's a, you know, it's a, a different kind of, of, of response. You're using uh, different parts of your brain to, you know, in, in, in writing than you do <clears throat> in, in improvising. Um, yes. So uh, I think that, you know, it's great. And I think for myself also, you know, from out of, from out of songwriting came, uh, you know, came little things first, you know, um, but uh, really I'm, I, I am a performer first. I'm a, I'm an instrumentalist who, mm -hmm. who expresses themselves in in different ways, and that's one of the ways 
that I express myself, you know, and, and, and thank God for it. You know, it's like, it's wonderful to, to be able to, to do that. You know, you just, sometimes you affect uh, more people. I had no idea how, how these, uh, the, the suite would af affect people. And mm -hmm. it, it, uh, it was impactful more than I could have ever dreamt, you know, and, and more than, you know, from, from a playing, just a mere playing standpoint. Um, right. You know, that kind of thing. But, you know, it's also uh, a good thing now, you know, that I, I have my, uh, my iPhone. And so, um, you know, back in the day, it was like a cassette tapes and things like that. But now, um, especially since I'm older, you know, my memory gets a little short. And so, <laughs> so, so I, I can be playing and, and I'll, I'll think of all these different lines and, and thematic phrases and what have you. And then, so now I make sure that I, I turn on the, uh, the record button. <laughs> so, so that I'll remember it and I'll go back and I'll, I'll listen to it and, and, and kind of, I said, okay, I like that part. I'll keep that and I'll, I'll, I'll toss that, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then I'll, I'll find which things can uh, merge together and, and uh, you know, and, uh, work on the harmony and things like that. But, um, but I definitely use that now a lot. So yeah. very helpful. It is helpful. I've, I've, I've gone there myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So he's got, he, she's got, so, oh, Trapita is asking something. Did you see this in the chat here? Is there, is there one thing musically that you haven't accomplished yet that you're yearning to do? Uh -huh. <laughs> We're both so accomplished, but just wondering if there is something you want to achieve. Hmm. <laughs> um, I don't know. What about you, Donna? Did you go first on that one? <laughs> Oh, well, the sky's the limit. I mean, shoot, you know. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, I'd like to have, uh, I'd like to, to um, just uh, conduct a string orchestra. That's what I'd like to do. I mean, I've, I've done it in, in, cer in certain ways, but I just, I'd like to cultivate a string orchestra and, and have, and, and have um, uh, wind players and singers mm -hmm. sing with them just as they sing with big bands that they, you know, they're singing with big bands, which is just like, I would love, I would love that. I, you know, mm -hmm. I've done kind of sort of those kinds of things, you know, in master class situations and stuff, but I haven't tried it otherwise yet. Um, but that, that, um, you know, embarking on those <laughs> huge <laughs> endeavors like that. And, you know, uh, you know, sometimes it keeps me from playing other kinds of music that I want to play. <laughs> it's like, you know, right. I want to, you know, I want to record more and, and stuff. And, uh, you know, and even, even the, the classical stuff that I haven't, uh, you know, I have, uh, have um, back recordings, but I don't, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't know what is to come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I, I kind of would like to do the same thing. I'd like to write for big band again. Uh, so wow. I haven't done that in, in, in years. Wow. Wow. And um, so I, I've kind of been just working in, you know, in a small, small ensemble format. And so I, I would like to do that. I did write a choral piece, uh, because, but because of COVID, it never was uh, performed. Um, and, and you're right, once you start to, to composing for, on a larger scale, it really, just takes up all your time so it's yeah. either like you're going to perform or you're going to write <laughs> at that point that's right that's and right. so you have to really make a commitment um mm -hmm. you know as to what you're going to do at a particular time you know what's more important so uh-huh that's very true that's very yeah. true wow <laughs> yeah any more questions maybe i'll hop on here with one last question uh it's a question i've been asking a lot of folks uh What's the what's the thing you're looking forward to most uh, musically? Uh, as let's let's say as COVID gets in the rearview mirror, the pandemic gets in the rearview mirror. What is the thing musically you're looking forward to uh, the most? 
I just okay. like to play for some people. You kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's really it for me too. I would like to, uh, you know, I just uh, I'm looking forward to just playing and connecting. But you know, I mean, one connects a, a certain in many ways over the internet. I mean, it's not uh, it's, it's true. Not, not dead. I mean, vibrations are vibrations. And we pick up stuff, you know. But you know, of course, we you know we want to we want to feel it closer, <laughs> feel that exactly, outcome, feel that energy closer. And uh, sure, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, I, I would love to do that and and to travel some more because it seemed like uh, yeah. right when COVID started, um, you know, I was doing a lot of traveling and. Uh, so that, that felt really good. I, I kind of like to get back to that. Um, wow. Just hugging folks and, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, really. Well, I can't wait for that too. As a person who organizes concerts, it's been a long time. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, I want to thank you both so much for being here, for sharing your thoughts and sharing your music. It's been great to have you. And thanks for everyone that joined us today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, if we didn't get to your question, I'm sorry about that. Um, but anyway, it's been great to have you all. And thanks so much. And we'll see you all soon. Wow. wow. All right. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. So much for having us. It's just thanks, a pleasure. It's been a great fun, great fun for us. It really yes, it has. <laughs> I loved it totally. Thanks, Diane. And thank you, Dustin. Yeah, my wonderful. pleasure. Thank you. And everybody out there, bye bye. <laughs> thank you for joining in. <laughs> Bye. Take care.